Yeah. Listen, I'm here with David Nico Hill, former MMA champion, and we're talking about survival today. So you're the man that I need to talk to. How you doing, man? I'm blessed and highly favored, Pastor. What can I say? I'm in the middle of the storm now. I know you're in the middle of the storm, but you got no control. Listen, your ministry is called God Soldiers Ministry. Yes, and sir. so this is the time for ministry just like what you do. So you're the one we need to talk to today. This is Conversations, uh, David, where we just talk and we just uh, try to encourage each other and encourage our viewers. And so Amen. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about survival and about how at the end of the day to survive, don't panic. You know, see the way uh, uh, to survival, to survive a physical wilderness is more than just building a shelter, starting a fire and purifying the water. It requires a certain mindset, a will to live that overcomes the fear associated with the crisis. You know, upon entering a wilderness, our tendency is often to let our imagination run wild. We start to ask the question, will I ever make it? Why is this happening to me? Does God realize what I'm going through? Is he angry with me? And, and though it's natural to ask those questions, David, obsessing over them depletes our resolve to believe in God. Because in the wilderness, perspective is everything. So if Amen. you find yourself feeling this way, don't panic. Take a moment to remind yourself of who God is, who you are in Christ, and what the Bible says about his faithfulness during troubled times. You got to refuse to allow yourself to believe anything but God's word. David said this. He said it twice. He said, my heart is steadfast. He said, oh, God, my heart is steadfast. And know, uh, David, that fear uh, makes you susceptible to the lies of the enemy. He'll lie to you about God's faithfulness, about who God is, about what God is doing. He even lied to you about God's existence. But at the end of the day, we need to have spiritual stamina in the midst of a crisis. We need to have spiritual stamina that God is still there. He's still on the throne. And that will give you the will to live and the will to go on and understand that he will never leave you nor forsake you. What you think about that, David? Well, I was just saying hallelujah and amen through the holy, <laughs> everything you were saying, Pastor, because yeah. it was piercing my heart and it was repairing my frontal lobe. Oh, you know, wow. you're talking about what must we do in this yeah. crisis that we're in right now. Right. And I think that we need to be still. That's Oh, wow, that's good. And know that he is God. I think we need to be patient. And wait on the Lord, because right now in the privacy of our own humanity, we're either going to draw near the things of God uh -huh. or we're going to draw near the things of man. Right. That's right. That's right. He's kind of put us in, an, in a situation that's very interesting. And, and, and I have all the sympathy in the world for, for anybody that, God forbid, is going through the, the virus right now, the coronavirus or, or, you know, lost somebody. But. We believe as believers that there is a place, no more pain, no more sorrow, no more tears. And, and we believe that no eye has seen, no one can imagine, nor is in the hearts of men and women or children. But God is prepared for those that love him. And mm -hmm. you mentioned David, and I was thinking about David, Pastor. He was in the wilderness taking care of the sheep. He was a stepchild, told when to talk, when to go, where to go, what to say. And, you know, he had an intimacy in the privacy of his own humanity, where he knew the voice of God. Wow. And that prepared him for the bear that came, for the lion that came. And mm -hmm. it prepared him for the giant. He said, I'm not putting on the full armor of man. I have the full armor of God. And that's all I need. And he took out the giant. Sometimes, Pastor, we need a giant in front of us wow. to bring the David out of us. Wow. So... So he learned to depend on God and it helped him to understand what type of armor he needed or what type of defense he needed about what, what he's going up against. Absolutely. And a lot of times we panic and you'll notice a lot of the best fighters, if yeah. you watch, they relax uh -huh. so they can see what's coming at them. Wow. And then they react. And that's what we got to do right now in the middle of this storm. Uh -huh. We need to know who's in control. And if we hold on, we will be reborn. Wow. We will come out stronger wow. and better because of it. Because there's many more storms coming, Pastor. You know, right. we read the word. You know what Jesus said. Yeah. That's good. That's good. I like that. 
So relax. So how do you, how you put your dukes up in MMA? <laughs> oh, well, here, here's Muay Thai. Okay, here's, Muay Thai. <laughs> here's boxing. Boxing. And MMA is about in the middle of that. There you go, about the middle left. There you go. So relax. Hit. Hit. Don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. <laughs> but relax. Relax. Yes, sir. Listen, God's in control. Can you just say a prayer for someone who's watching us today, man, and to help them out throughout their week? Absolutely. What they need to know is, you know, if you've never read the Bible, mm -hmm. if you've never gone to a church, mm -hmm. But you know, there's got to be something better than this. Yeah. This is not all that there is. Right. And this prayer is for you. And if you've already gone to church and you've already been baptized, God bless. And let's just rededicate right now. That's right. That's right. I'm going to start the prayer. And then I'm going to ask that whoever is listening to just repeat what I say. If they've never ever ask Jesus into their heart. To be the thief on the cross, pastor, that doesn't say, if you're the son of man, get off that cross and save me. But when you enter to your father's house, remember me. Because we're all sinners in desperate need of the Savior. So, uh, Heavenly Father, creator of everyone and everything, Lord of Lord and King above all kings. Father, I just ask that you forgive us for anything we've looked at, thought of, spoke upon, or acted upon that did not glorify you that maybe made you upset, or maybe made you angry, or maybe disappointed you. For that, I am truly sorry, but we are all just simply sinners in desperate need of a Savior, Father. So as we come to your prayer room, Father, I just invoke every righteous, guardian, precious, angelic, warring, healing, ministering, and protective, personally assigned guardian angels into this room, Father. Yes. Father, I just ask that right now that you hold us in the middle of this storm, Father. That you calm us, Father. That in the privacy of our own humanity, no matter where we are at, no matter what we're doing, no matter who we're with, that you're right there with us, Father, calling us home one day. So if you've never asked Jesus into your heart, please just say this simple prayer with me. Heavenly Father, that's right, just say Heavenly Father. I may not have a relationship with you. I may be angry at you. I may be disappointed with you. But right here, right now, I want to come to you. I want to confess Jesus is Lord with my mouth and willingly accept you into my heart. Father, please teach me how to pray. Teach me how to worship. Teach me how to read the word. And after this storm, because this too will soon pass, Father, please direct me into a good church. Because if you fall down in the world, you might get hurt. You fall down in a good church, somebody is going to pick you up. And if you said that prayer, just know that heaven is throwing a party right now. They're throwing a celebration right now in your honor. We know, Father, that you left the throne, defeated sin, were crucified on the cross. Then they took your body, they threw it in a tomb. But hallelujah, you have risen. Yeah. And you're coming back soon to bring us home. So, Father, I want to have a relationship with you. Yes. I want to be your child. And man, if you said that prayer, God bless, amen, because I'm going to tell you something. You know, Pastor, it doesn't mean that it's going to be everything perfect now. Right, right. Let's take those seeds, come on now, that you just planted, and let's make sure we water them so they return 30, 60, and 100 fold. There you go. And, and listen, that's survival, David. Survival is having a relationship with God. That means whatever happens on this earth, this, this, this place is not your home. We just travelers walking through. So Come on. Amen. Eternal life is what it's all about, man. Listen, I appreciate it. I know you hanging in there. You're looking great. Continue to do what you're doing, man. And I'll continue to do sure. what I'm doing. And we're just glad that we were able to talk. This is Conversations, Mount Zion Congre Conversations with Pastor Larry. And I'm here with David Nico Hill of God's Soldiers Ministries. Keep up the fight, my brother. Good seeing you. You too. Always a blessing. Always an honor. 
always a privilege and we're fighting the good fight of faith and we're running to win the eternal prize. We got to get excited. Wake them up, shake them up. Let the Holy Spirit take them up. If you cannot stand when your church is upside down, come on. Uh -uh. You ain't ready for the fight. We got to get ready it, for the fight, Pastor. You got it. Thanks, David. Take Amen. care, man. God bless you. Love you, Pastor. Love you too.